But um, I would say that somebody who is in the visual arts definitely was having an elevated status throughout the 1920s. Mm -hmm. uh, that if you had a talent for being able to put images out there, make them look exciting and vibrant and eye catching, this was definitely an age for you. Um, so the 1920s were all about being seen and being recognized being seen. Um, and as somebody such as yourself who works so well, so much with visual arts, um, do you seem to trace again? I mean, I'm just full of puns that I don't even mean to <laughs> so trace the, the drawing and the painting arts and just basically graphic design. Is it is would you say the 20s is kind of like the birth of that era? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> I think it's the birth of the, the way we look at it. Sure. Um, I think the graphic design it, it, you know, is, I mean, you could argue. I mean, we could do a whole other podcast where we talk about the, kind of the, the, the origin of graphic design. I, I teach a class um, about comic books and graphic storytelling. And we talk about kind of. Yes, you can look at the comic strips of the you know 1890s or so, and then all, all the way through the 1920s, and talk about oh that's the origin of comics. But you can date it even further back. The the first class we literally talk about you know the Lascaux caves and things like that. And so like I think in one sense you're absolutely right that the, the 1920s in terms of graphics design and and that that meeting point between different you know mediums and genres and things like that really. Mm -hmm as far as we understand it is it dates back to the twenties. Um, and, and as an English teacher, I look at it, you know, the 1920s is such a special era um, because it, we, there's a global connection that like you can connect to world war one, you can connect it to, you know, the, the stock booms in the twenties and, you know, eventually the crash uh, and the depression, yeah. the dust bowl and all this stuff, all these things kind of swirl together to get this interconnectivity between different mediums of art and expression, you know, like we have all these American expatriates who are floating around Europe and France and Spain, meeting these artists um, who, you know, like Kuja or, or however you pronounce his name. Um, old I, Francis I, C. Yeah, old Francis C. There you go. Um, I, so C. I, I, I it, it's funny to even think about how how it's a chicken or the egg. Like, what came first? What influenced what? On, on the macro level, just all these artists and writers and musicians and on the micro level of, the, of Gatsby itself, you know, like if you look at it, Fitzgerald himself and his history, clearly his own experiences are just littered throughout Gatsby, right? Yeah. The, the, like it really is a semi-autobiographical look at himself, his own experiences, his own anxieties. Um, but it's also clear that, that there was some connection between this piece of art and where the story eventually like went. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I regard this cover so highly. It's not just about Gatsby and its connection to that it, it's also so indicative of the time where, yeah, the art style does reflect 1920s, but there's more to it than that, that, mm. that there's such a historical connection between all these things. And I, I think after this podcast, I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the other covers for, for other books of the time, you know, Hemingway and things like that, because I, I feel like there is, there's something there that, that is just important. Um, you know, that, that like, it's so but, reflective. 